Welcome back everyone to my stock market weekly update series, which I post every Saturday. In this week's episode, we're wrapping up Q3 earnings season with a few more big retailers reporting, including Best Buy. We also have China being surrounded by controversy yet again, as they continue to hold on to their zero pepperoni lockdown policies that have really damaged their economy. And we also have Bob Iger returning to save Disney. All of that, plus the biggest gainers and losers for the week, and a few more things as well. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump straight into this. Okay, and starting first here with the markets, which tend to perform pretty well during holidays because of the increase in consumer spending. Well, of course, this week we know that we had Thanksgiving and Black Friday, which at this point I think should just be considered Black November, but that really boosted the markets by quite a bit this week. With the Dow Jones seeing almost a 2% boost for the week, the S&P 500 climbed just above 1.5% as well, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq finished the week with just a slight gain of about 0.7%, although it is still down a giant 31% from the top in what has been a very large crash for tech stocks all year long. Turning over to market news though, we know that most popular stocks have already reported earnings for the third quarter, but a couple retailers finished it off this week with giant tech and appliance retailer Best Buy reporting better than expected results that not only topped analyst estimates, but they even managed to stick to their holiday outlook, which is something that other retailers like Target and Macy's have actually lowered because of the weakening economy. Best Buy though, well, they even saw strong demand for their electronics despite the crumbling PC market that has even hurt giant companies like Microsoft and chip developers like AMD, Intel, and Nvidia. As a result, Best Buy stock actually soared by almost 13% for the week, although they are still down over 40% from their highs of last year. By the way, I've always enjoyed tracking Best Buy stock myself just because they really have one of the most attractive dividends in the market with already a monstrous yield of over 4% and yet they still have some excellent growth metrics on it like a payout ratio below 50%, a very large growth rate of over 20% and over a decade of consecutive increases. And yet their valuation is actually cheaper than the sector by around a mid to high single digit percentage to go along with some really strong financials that were really boosted by quite a bit in recent years thanks to all the pandemic stimulus. However, the only reason why I still refuse to purchase a stock myself is because I think some of their best years may be behind them as their sales are now in decline with a 10% drop expected this year and still negative growth expected next year as well. Which don't get me wrong, they're allowed to have a couple correction years after such strong performance, but with the rise of Amazon and with how strong their biggest competitors like Walmart and Target have become, I just think Best Buy is lacking a major competitive edge over really any of this competition. So I see their growth being very limited in the future. Overall, I just see it as more of like a boring dividend stock with very little growth to be had over the long term. And hey, some people might think that that's fine. They might be okay with that. But for me, I just think there's better options out there to invest my money. Now, there were a few more retailers reporting this week, but I'll just quickly gloss over those in the gainers and losers section since most of the attention this week was really placed on China, who decided to impose fresh travel and work restrictions in several different cities across the country due to pepperoni cases approaching an all-time high despite their already very strict zero pepperoni lockdown policies that have clearly not been working and are really condemned by most nations around the world for human rights violations, as well as just simply destroying the global supply chain and causing more harm than good. Even Apple's manufacturing district of Zhengzhou is now implementing a week-long lockdown and the broader economy at large continues to struggle as a result of these policies, which sent the Hang Seng stock index down another 2.3% for the week, while individual stocks continue to get crushed under the weight of it all, like online shopping giants JD.com, for example, 
falling another 12% this week, despite it having already lost more than half of its entire value from the top. Time will tell if outside pressure will persuade China to ease up on some of these strict policies, but for now, the situation is an unfortunate one that we'll just have to keep a close eye on and see how it develops. And finally, the other piece of stock market news that really made uh, headlines this week was Disney stock soaring by almost 8% after they shockingly announced that former CEO Bob Iger will return to managing the company after it's been underperforming over the past like three years or so under the new leadership of Bob Chapek, who oversaw the stock price losing more than half of its entire value under his control. Iger, of course, is famous for transitioning Disney over to the video streaming market as he oversaw the purchase of Marvel, Star Wars, and the eventual launch of Disney+, Plus, which when combined with Hulu and ESPN+, Plus, have rewarded Disney with even more subscribers than the previous market-leading giant in Netflix. The change in CEO also comes at a time when Disney is getting ready to make some big changes in their streaming business with a plan to acquire the remaining stake of Hulu from from Comcast, who still owns about a third of the company. The implementation of a cheaper ad-supported version is also coming to Disney Plus to attract more budget-oriented viewers, while a price increase to the ad-free version will also take place next month. And there's even rumors circulating that Disney is considering combining both Disney Plus and Hulu into a single unified platform so that they can offer even a, a, an even bigger library really of content over the competition. Personally, I do own Disney stock myself and I gotta say, I'm on board with bringing Bob Iger back. Now he's only gonna be around for, I think it's like a two year contract, but it fits in perfectly with the timeline of all of these changes taking place. And it also fits with their upcoming deadline, their, their goal that they have for Disney Plus becoming profitable by 2024, which by the way is a goal that they absolutely have to meet because I really think Wall Street is going to punish the stock if Disney Plus does not become profitable by that time as they've been really losing billions and billions of dollars on their streaming business. So I think investors are going to really punish them if they do not meet that goal. So you've got all of these drastic changes going on with the business, especially the, the most important part of their business in, in video streaming that continues to lose so much money. And you have a deadline that you absolutely need to meet. Yeah, it makes sense. Bring Bob Iger back, who is known for getting things done. He's known for meeting deadlines. Investors have always really liked him. He's done well for the company and for the stock. And I think that's going to help keep things calm and keep the, the uh, business running smoothly during this transitionary period here. And by the way, Disney stock at these low levels, I do think that it is a buy at these prices, but that's just my personal opinion. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and finish up now with the biggest gainers and losers for the week, and I'll let you know if anything catches my eye. Okay, and starting first here with the gainers, really nothing too exciting for me personally, but Overall, just a bunch of traditional retailers really outperforming because of better than expected earnings to finish off the third quarter season. And by the way, most of these have been crashing super hard because of the economy. So getting better, better than expected results just really sent them flying for the week with Burlington stores jumping over 30%. They're of course famous for the Burlington Coat Factory stores. There's also Dick Sporting Goods jumping 18%. Ross also climbed <clears throat> by another 18%. Gap rose by 16%. And then of course Best Buy, which we talked about earlier, climbed by about 16% for the week as well. But again, none of these are anything that I would personally want to invest in myself, maybe Best Buy just for the dividend, but really overall, I'd rather have my money parked in other stocks, especially, you know, if we're talking about retail, I'd rather have Amazon, who, by the way, is currently down more than half of its entire value right now, and I think it's a great pickup at these prices, so I'll probably be making a video about them soon too. Turning over to the losers though, again, all eyes were really on China this week with the Chinese gaming company, Billy Billy falling over 20%, H World fell 14%, I believe that's a Chinese resorts and cruise line operator. We also had JD.com falling about 14%, which we mentioned earlier. Uh, Kanzun uh, 
fell over 13%. I think that's like a Chinese staffing company out in Shanghai, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And then the electric vehicle startup company Xpeng fell about 11%. And then the other online shopping giant in Alibaba also fell over 10% as well. And out of all of these, I mean, I would say Xpeng and Alibaba are really the only two that kind of catch my eye here. Baba because, well, I've been buying the stock myself all year long by tiny amounts as it falls. But, you know, I just think at this point, it's down a mind-blowing 76% from the top. I think it's way too cheap to ignore. What's funny is that they actually had great earnings the week before, and they even announced another $15 billion of stock buybacks on top of the already existing plan of $25 billion, which tells me that management knows just how undervalued their stock has become. And really, it's trading as if their business is crumbling to the ground, but that's not the case at all. They just had two gigantic years of growth during the pandemic, and now they're correcting back a little bit. I mean, they're about flat this year, but still positive, and they're expected to recover next year with some, you know, double digit growth as well. And the reason why is because, you know, the Chinese economy has been really struggling and they had so such giant growth. So, you kind of have to have this little bit of a correction period here and I just feel that patient investors with this one are probably going to do well over the long term, assuming that, you know, Chinese stocks don't just get delisted or something catastrophic happens. But if if things can get better with the economy and things can be a little stable with Chinese stocks and being listed in the US, I think it's going to outperform over the long term. And then with Xpeng, I mean, I'm actually not very interested in that stock myself, but I used to be invested in their rival in NEO, who has been on fire lately, expanding out into Europe, and now it has plans to even launch like a cheaper sub-brand of EVs with an eventual launch plan in the United States. So I've been kind of waiting for an opportunity to jump back into the stock as a speculative gamble, because I think it's pretty attractive here. I mean, they're down like a massive 85%. So I think it's getting pretty close to a buying range here, you know, as like a speculative kind of gamble. But I'll probably have to make a dedicated video on them soon too and uh, let you know if I think it's worth picking up at these levels because it's getting pretty attractive here. But anyway, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Let me know what you guys think about everything we discuss here. Let me know what socks you own, if any, that were talked about as well. And I hope that you all have a great upcoming week. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for the support. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.